I'm glad you could be with us today. This will be a brief uh, presentation. I'm recording it on Saturday as I did not have the week to prepare my typical message. But I, And I have a guest speaker coming in from the Gideon ministry. One of our elders is going to make a presentation about the Gideon ministry. What you may or may not be aware of is that the Gideon ministry was instrumental in my going into vocational ministry and becoming a pastor. Uh, just a quick story, a uh, bit of personal history. Uh, about 10 years before I became a pastor, I uh, joined the, my wife and I joined the ministry of the Gideons. And uh, as a Christian businessman, I didn't have a lot of uh, time in my schedule uh, to go off and do school distributions, but I was comfortable, let's say, uh, speaking publicly. And so I chose to serve the ministry by being a church, uh, a church partner speaker. And so I would go around when when needed to uh, share what God had been doing in the in the Gideon ministry. And as the years went by, people began to say, "Paul, you seem." pretty at ease behind the pulpit. Do you think that God might be calling you to a, a pulpit ministry? And of course, I was like, no, I have a business to run, and, which was the case in uh, partnering with my brother, Eric, through uh, the decades. But in 2008 and in the years leading up to it, we could see the handwriting on the wall, as the saying goes, that, that construction wasn't going to be able to pull America out of the next recession. And so I decided to go back to school uh, at a Christian university and uh, finish my leadership degree and then go on to seminary from there. But I, I say that to say that a lot of you are familiar with the Gideon ministry, and I want to share some stories today that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, one of the stories was written up in the Bellingham Herald, where uh, one of the Gideon brothers was on a hotel distribution and he had his uh, he had his hand truck with a bunch of Bibles on it and he was going around uh, replacing the Bibles in the hotel room and this is a hotel Bible what you probably aren't aware of is that a hotel Bible will have over almost well over 2,500 potential interactions with the Word of God and a person who was in a hotel room before it will be replaced and so that's that's what the our studies have shown. This one turned out to be in good shape, and it was donated to our church to use as a pew Bible. And so we like the uh, the fact that you can purchase a Bible like that for for the Gideon Ministry for five bucks. Now, if you like me have gone to the Bible Bible bookstore, and you say, "Oh, I'll take this big study Bible," <laughs> which is starting to look pretty darn shabby, but um, you could spend quite a bit of bank on this Bible for your own personal use. So how nice to be able to, uh, you know, send a complete edition for $5. Another thing that people aren't aware of about the Gideon ministry, which is near and dear to my heart, is what I like to think of as the Gideon ministry's secret weapon. Okay? And I say secret weapon because not a lot of people are aware that you can receive from the Gideons free, yes, free greeting cards. Let me just show you a couple of them. Well, I got more than a couple. Um, here's, here's, here are a couple. This one says, when we lift our hearts in prayer, we can be sure the Lord is there. This is a beautiful card. Um, we, we give these away at our church. We have a couple of locations where you can just pick up a card on the inside it says, in honor of, and then you fill in the person's name and then declare how many Bibles. It says, may God bring you peace and comfort. Uh, on the other side, my lighting's not very good for doing this, but very, very nice. And then there's an envelope in which you can uh, write your check or fill out your credit card information and send it off to make a donation. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In honor again, an honorarium praying for you on this very special day in your life. So I, I just was like struck by how many people will go and spend, you know, over $5 at a uh, at a Hallmark shop. Now, 
I think cards are super important, and here I've got one that I was going to send off to someone, and I like this scene. It reminds me of Camp Furwood, where I am currently serving uh, on the board. <laughs> and so there you have, an, and this was, of course, just a blank card, but here's four bucks, three ninety nine. Okay, four bucks. I'm almost to donating a Bible by the time I even buy this card, and so it's uh, definitely something that I, I wish more uh, Christians could consider. On your special day, a beautiful card for uh, to give to graduates in memory. Perhaps you've lost a friend or a loved one in COVID or to the COVID. Here's a beautiful card, Coast of Maine uh, picture there. And what a, what a neat way, I know a very affordable, neat way for someone to be remembered. Um, and so... That here's another in memory card, in memoriam card. Yep, here's one that says in recognition. These are great for graduations or you know, anniversaries, recognition of anniversary. Here's one that's just kind of cool. Looks like a little place where you just want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with a friend, and it just says thinking of you. Here's another one thinking of you, and this is not the whole card assortment, these are just a few that I grabbed praying for you. And you know, last week when we got together, we were looking at how do I, don't, don't waste a quarantine. That was our talk when we last got together. And we remember we talked about prayer. Yeah, make the most of your time. By, I'm looking up at my, my uh, whiteboard from last week's sermon outline. Make the most of your time by praying. Make the most of your time by being missional. You talk about a great way to be missional and that is to, you know, be supporting this ministry of the Gideons. You might not realize this, but they are, thanks to the partnership of the church in America, sending out over a hundred million. Yeah, you heard me right. A hundred million copies of scripture a year. In fact, just a few months ago, I think two months ago, they had a blitz, which is where Gideons come in from around the state in the Tacoma area, and in one week placed over 20,000 copies of God's Word. Many of those were placed person to person out on the street by, by these bold brothers and sisters in Christ just saying, how would you like a free copy of God's Word? These little puppies are the real secret weapon. It's the New Testament and the Psalms. They have uh, places to turn to in uh, for help in time of need, you probably can't read it there, but look at all these verses. How, where to find help if you're suffering abuse or addicted or afraid, and they're alphabetical. It goes all the way through to W and worried. Yeah, who doesn't want to know? You know, most people have issues and they want help. And what, what better place to go to than the source, to the truth of God's word and to find help? He is our ever-present help in time of need. Here's another cool thing. I'm kind of running out of things to show and tell here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me tell a story first. Have you ever wanted a smoke so bad you would, you would take one of these tiny pages out of your New Testament to roll it up in and smoke it? See, that's the situation that a young man named... Andrew found himself in down in Columbia. Andrew was uh, in prison. He was locked up, expected to be locked up for a long time, and he had this little Gideon Testament and decided, since he was out of rolling papers, to tear out a page and figured he would take start at the back, and so he tore out the pages. Well, one day as he was rolling a smoke, he read the words, Who is able? to open the scroll in the Lamb's Book of Life. And as he was, he read that as he was rolling up the cigarette, and he, it, those words, it was like the Holy Spirit just burned those words into his mind. And so he decided to ask people if they could answer that question. And he find, finally found his way to the prison chaplain, who explained what was going on in, the, in that throne room in the Book of Revelation, and how... Jesus was the only one who was able to meet the qualification to open the Lamb's Book of Life. And 
He is the author and perfecter of our faith and, and uh, the source of the universe and the creation. And so it was he was the agent of creation. And so Andrew, uh, upon reflection and meeting with the chaplain, dedicated his life to Christ and is now serving, not time in jail, but serving as a pastor down in Bogota, uh, Colombia. And so, yeah, neat story, huh? Here's a cool thing too that's new. This is this is something that uh, um, wasn't in the Gideon ministry when I was serving there, which is like ten years ago now. <laughs> it seems like, um, and it's called the Life Book. Let's see if we can get a picture of that. Yeah, the Life Book. It's it's about a quarter of an inch thick, about four inches by four inches wide, and this is designed to be something that students can give away to their friends. So Christian students are being empowered by the Gideon ministry to give this away. And uh, you can talk to, when the next time the Gideons call your church, if you don't attend our church, you can talk, have uh, your pastor talk to them and he can ask for hundreds of these things for free. And there, it's a kind of a two-part deal. Well, three-part really, but it's called the Life Book. You can read more about it on uh, at Facebook.com on the Life Book Movement. It's all one word: the Life Book Movement. Just spell it the right way, and you'll get there. Uh, and it's also uh, and it, what it is. It's got part one, and part one talks about the story, God's great story, before Jesus came. Uh, and before he shows up on the scene is how they put it. <laughs> it's a quick retelling, if you will, of the first part of the Bible before Jesus arrives. And it explains how things were, uh, how things were great in back in Eden, and then how things went bad, and then why Jesus has to come to make things right. That's part one of, the, of this book, as it explains. Then part two moves on to, it's straight from the Bible. It moves on uh, with the story of Jesus while he was on the earth and how he does some amazing stuff. And then there's a what about you part. What about you? If this part is about what God's story means for your life, and, and what does Jesus have to do with you, and what is your role in the world that God created? And, what, and it talks about what does God want from you? And then there's a help portion, uh, which has some help and answers for things that people might be considering. And uh, so it's a cool resource that we, we, we put these out uh, so that the students, the college students and the high school students at our church can resupply with these every week if they want to. Yeah. I actually have a friend up in uh, Whatcom County who, um, he was having suicidal thoughts and uh, had attempted on a particular Friday night to take his life. And uh, he didn't show up for work on Monday. And I got a phone call from uh, one of the employees who had said that he had heard this gentleman's name mentioned um, over the police scanner. And so he warned me that this guy might not be coming to work because he had been taken in for medical evaluation. So I said, okay. And I was driving uh, back toward the shop and stopped in at Starbucks. And when he contacted me and said, hey, I'm sorry, I haven't got to work on time. Uh, he's, he was the one with the gate key. <laughs> so, and he says, uh, I said, that's okay. You know, you got a lot of stress going on in your world right now as you're trying to finish. We were finished carpenters. And so we knew, I knew a lot of the stresses when subs don't show up and you're on a time crunch to get people moved in. You have a couple dozen it's not just one house, it's dozens of apartments or condos. Anyway, so I said, why don't you, since you're heading right past the uh, Costco anyway on your way to the job site, why don't you meet me at the Starbucks and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. You see, I was determined to share the plan of salvation with this man and ask him if he would accept uh, a testament. So I called my wife and I said, please, let the auxiliary, uh, the, that's the women's arm of the Gideon ministry, let the women's auxiliary know that I'm in a, I'm in a life and death situation with a gentleman and that I intend to share the, God, the plan of salvation with him. And uh, so they started praying. And of course, we remember that 
how we make the most of our quarantine is by being devoted to prayer anyway. I didn't mention this earlier, but on the back of these little dollar fifty New Testaments that the Gideons hand out at the high schools, they're actually bright orange at the high school. And uh, this, I think the red ones are for like Christian schools. So, but anyway, in the back, plan of salvation, all spelled out. If you can read these two pages to a friend, you can lead them in the steps needed for them to devote their life to Christ. And they have a, and there's a page here with an opportunity for them to sign their name. And on this day, I became a citizen of heaven. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's very cool. And I can't uh, believe that I've talked for 15 minutes about this, but um, it's pretty easy to do when it's something that you're passionate about. Uh, when I became a pastor here, one of the first groups of people to come visit me in my new office here were a couple of men from the local Gideon camp. They said, hey, we heard there was a new pastor here. How can we pray for you? And I said, wow, I love you guys. <laughs> you know, what can I do to help you? And I, uh, so they prayed for me and, and we chatted and, and I said, are you guys still storing all those boxes of Bibles in your garages? And, and you know, and most garages aren't heated here in the Pacific Northwest. And mildew and mold can be an issue for in some cases. And they said, yeah, we are. I said, so here we are in this big, big church building as a church replant. We hadn't really started filling the place up yet. I said, how about I give you guys a room to store your scriptures in? And so for the last five years, six years, the Gideons of two local camps have been storing pallets of scriptures uh, here. And it's been just a way that we can bless them and encourage them. I wish more pastors would encourage these faithful servants of God. Pastor, if you're listening, if you're listening and you go to another church, encourage your pastor to give up five minutes of pulpit time once a year. And to invite these guys in so that you can hear about how a hundred million copies of scripture are going out every year. That you can hear new stories every year about the way God is using this ministry around the globe. They're in almost, I don't know, 200 countries now. I think there was 113 countries 10 years ago. Guys, God is moving. He is working around the world, particularly in the 1040 Muslim controlled world. The doors are being opened. We've been praying for open doors for the gospel, and God is opening doors. And, uh, and the need for scriptures is great. A hundred million copies a year, and we're falling behind. That's the sad reality, I think, that it's not enough. That as, as uh, church or global population continues to go grow, rather, that, uh, that the ministry needs to grow with it. Yeah, so what else do I have to say? Hey, here's the thought. Remember how we talked about making the most of your time last week by being missional? If you're a team leader in your job, if you if you help direct a group of people on in your particular section, you could qualify to be a Gideon. Um, if you have a bachelor's degree, you automatically qualify to become a Gideon. If you, um, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, their goal is to just put these, to put these scriptures in the pathways of life. So what are the pathways? Places where people tend to go. Doctors, nurses get white copies for their inside their lab coats. We place them in hospitals. I say we because when we're supporting this ministry, it's like we're placing them. We, we don't have to go. They go, but we help them to go. And uh, yeah, a hundred million times a year, a scripture is being placed somewhere around the world. You know, a lot of people in a lot of countries can't afford the dollar fifty U.S. in value. Isn't that sad? We'll spend five bucks on a specialty coffee sometimes daily. How do we how do we justify that and not also hand out five bucks, forego a cup of coffee maybe one time a week? So these guys, 
these ninjas, as the uh, newspaper uh, uh, columnist wrote, the Gideon ninjas. I love these guys. Gals. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you go. But first, let me pray for you before we go. Uh, we just celebrated a Thanksgiving week. Maybe the Gideon ministry impacted your life. If so, I would love to hear it. You can just hit the comment button and, uh, yeah, or contact me through our church's website via email if you want. I would love to hear your story. I know pastors who went into hotel rooms before they were pastors, people who went into hotel rooms to take their life and found that Gideon Bible in the hotel room. And their life was transformed on that very night. Yeah. Satan meant it for bad, Joseph told his brothers, but God meant it for good. Yeah. Pray for the people in the hotel ministry. You, don't, you can't even imagine what they come across sometimes when the, when the maids have to open the hotel room doors. Anyway, let me pray, and then we'll let you go. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to just speak about this ministry that's near and dear to my heart. And God, I know that because it's simply the sharing of your word and your truth that it's near and dear to your heart. Lord, I thank you that 100% of the proceeds go to spreading the scriptures. There aren't very many uh, opportunities where we can know when we're donating money that 100% is going to print Bibles. Thank you for these men and women who, out of their own uh, resources, are paying for all the overhead of this ministry. Nothing is getting skimmed off the top. Man, what a model for a nonprofit ministry. I thank you for these men and women. I thank you for the people who are uh, investing their lives in things that are eternal. And I ask that you would that you would, even through this talk, perhaps move someone's heart to join in this great work that you're doing, not just here in America, but around the world in almost 200 countries. So we thank you for that. I pray that you continue to pour out your blessing on, uh, on this ministry. And God, I pray that, that those people who come alongside and to help support would also be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if when I was talking about my my message today, if you didn't understand what this meant, this idea about the plan of salvation or being saved, I'm not trying to talk in secret code. I'm just saying that if you don't feel like you have a personal relationship with, with God, then you probably feel like you have a void in your life. And he wants to restore that relationship that was broken back in the Garden of Eden. He wants you to have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with him that can start here and last forever. And so if you don't know that you have that, uh, get a Gideon Bible in a hotel room and read it. <laughs> Next time you go on vacation, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I do believe it is, would be a really smart thing to ask some questions of Christian friends or, or contact me and say, hey, Pastor Paul, how can I know for sure that I'm going to heaven? I would love to have that conversation with you. Until next week, God bless you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. Just be happy when he sees you and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen.